You just make it all. Hi guys. Oh man, I am back in the great state of Texas. <laughs> Welcome back to the great state of Texas. Here we are on this hot summer day in March. We have a red flag wildfire warning uh, here in Texas today and uh, I guess everywhere in the state as the state of Texas getting ready to go up in flames. But it is now Thursday, March 30th, 2022 and the little dog and I have just uh, finished our drive from hell $415 was the gas bill from uh, Florida to Texas in a Toyota pickup truck. $415 uh, was lightened by in the gas tank. But, uh, anywho, for whatever that is worth, uh, I'm sorry I cannot remember the kind-hearted... Uh, listener, the alert listener, who sent me this story uh, from those little lefties over there at Counterpunch. At Counterpunch. And good for the little lefties having the cojones to run this by a fellow named Howie Wolk. W-O-L-K-E. Uh, oops, this thing might be longer than I thought. Howie Walk is a retired wilderness guide and outfitter and past president of Wilderness Watch, a national conservation group based in Montana. So uh, if you look up Howie Walk, W-O-L-K-E, there's some good YouTube interviews with him if I ever do think about getting back into interviews. We're going to hear from Howie, but we're going to hear from Howie in Counterpunch today as today's chronicle of the collapse. I am going to uh, put the link to this. I highly advise you go over there and read this yourself because this is longer than I thought. <coughs> Might not get to the bottom of it. Take it away, Howie from Counterpunch titled Population and the Disease of Growth. Thank you. Population and the Disease of Growth. Back in the early 80s, when I still lived in Jackson Hole, a local reporter asked me who was most responsible for the global environmental crisis. It was a very general question, so I gave a very specific answer. The Pope. I immediately suggested citing overpopulation and the Pope's opposition to birth control, abortion, and women's rights. I stand by that answer still, though I now realize that such regressive sentiments are shared by the orthodox wings of nearly all organized religions. In order to avoid offending her readers, the reporter did not publish my response then. It has now been 11 years since I wrote this essay, which I also read, which is excellent, from uh, 2011 titled Wilderness and Overpopulation. You can find that, uh, Wilderness and Overpopulation in the Wilderness Watch blog if you want to read that as well. A few readers took vitriolic issue with the essay, but I stand by it. Since then, since 2011, the global human population has grown from about 6.9 billion to 7.9 billion, now increasing at roughly 75 million additional hominids every year. In the U.S. during the last 11 years, the population grew by about 20 million to 333 million today. 20 million additional humans is roughly equal to the total populations of New York State or Florida. And although population in the U.S. has recently stagnated in the wake of the corona panic, it is likely... Oh boy, I have no idea how to stop this phone from ringing. 
I have no idea how to shut this up. Shut up! Let's see if that works. Shut up! Where is this damn thing? Anyway, it is likely that without a concerted effort and policy to stabilize and reduce our population, we, meaning here in the United States, will be back on track toward 400 million before long. I am no demographer. My passion is wilderness and wildlife, yet I have been alarmed about the growing human hordes since I first read The Population Bomb by Paul Ehrlich back in the late 1960s. I am still alarmed, now more than ever, both because of our still increasing numbers and the direct link between population growth and the destruction of wildlife and wilderness. The refusal of many, yeah, like 99.9%, .9%, the refusal of many, nearly everybody, on both the political right and left, to acknowledge overpopulation as the root cause of most of our problems also alarms me. I'm a little unclear what problem Howie does not think has overpopulation as the root cause. It is the root cause of virtually 100% of the problems on this planet is overpopulation. <clears throat> not just religious zealots, but industrialists and right-wing politicians all clamor for unrestrained growth, but many on the left are equally obtuse valuing humans above all other life while arguing for reducing consumption and waste rather than reducing our collective biomass. We must do both, and the United States is leader of the pack when it comes to profligate resource consumption, yet we avoid action on overpopulation at the peril of losing what remains wild, natural, and beautiful on this planet. As Edward Abbey, father of five, once noted, quote, growth for the sake of growth is the ideology of the cancer cell. I added out that little, in that little factoid about Edward Abbey, uh, the father, well, five that we know about. You know, Ed was a major tomcat. Wouldn't surprise me if, if Ed uh, had 10 or 12 kids. You know, uh, Edward Abbey certainly goes down as one of the biggest eco-hypocrites that I have ever encountered. One of the main people screaming about overpopulation, at least five children. Maybe Howie is unaware of that. I don't know if Howie is a breeder or not. Could somebody please? Uh, Julianne, is Howie Volk a breeder? Anyway, back to, the, back to Howie's rant. Human population projections vary from stabilizing at 9 or 10 billion in a few decades to continued growth to 12 billion or more by the end of the century. Yet, we destroyed wild nature on a massive scale with just 5 billion humans. We, we, we destroy nature faster now at 7.9 billion, and one can only shrink in horror at the prospect of 9 or 10 or 12 billion of us chewing up whatever natural habitats that remain. 
After all, we are already in the middle of the sixth grade extinction, a human-caused debacle with climate disaster looming as the potential coup de grace, habitat destruction and fragmentation, pollution, overhunting and overfishing, and poaching, plus the spread of exotic species, you know, obviously, namely humans, are the primary culprits. Today's extinctions are occurring at about 1,000 times the pre-civilization background rate of natural extinctions, uh, and, and although greed, waste, and inefficiency all play a role over population is the fundamental driving force. Viewed from the perspective of animal numbers and biomass, the picture is even bleaker. We've all heard these, but if you're new to the doomosphere, uh, Howie will rehash this for you. According to a study by the World Wildlife Fund and others, in the 50 years from 1970 to 2020, the Earth's human population roughly doubled to 3.7 million to 7.8 billion, while during that same time period, the number of wild animals, vertebrates only, not counting the insects and uh, the invertebrates on this planet, declined by 70%. Humans climb by 100%. The number of humans went up by 100%. The number of our fellow earthlings with backbones went down by 70%. This is a real brain teaser why we're in the middle of the sixth mass extinction. And humans, plus their livestock, now account for 95% of the total mammal biomass on Earth. Indeed, human population growth and the destruction of wildlife are the undeniable cause and effect of ecological disaster at the local level or on a global scale, and everything in between, more people nearly always, I don't know why he put this qualifier nearly, more people nearly always equals less wildlife and less wildlife habitat. I would like an example where more people equals more wildlife and more wildlife habitat. Don't, I, I don't know if the editors made him put that word nearly in here or what. Many people, many people, again, 99% of clueless morons, <clears throat> do not realize that the destruction of biodiversity is not just about the loss of species and distinct subspecies. Species extinction is the ultimate manifestation of population growth and associated forms of habitat destruction. Yet when any natural habitat is logged, mined, drilled, fenced, roaded, overgrazed, border walled, <clears throat> or converted into strip malls, Sub subdivisions or cultivated farms, local populations of plant and animal species bite the dust. As local populations disappear, with them go genetic traits that might otherwise have proven beneficial, leading to new or better adapted forms of life. In other words, even if a species is somewhere else secure, the broad-scale loss of local populations due to the expansion of the human enterprise kneecaps 
the very process of evolution, the driving force behind life on Earth. This is a rarely discussed and tragic aspect of the biological meltdown. Fly over our country's heartland in a window seat and literally for hours one sees little but cultivated farmlands, literally hundreds of thousands of square miles where nature has been almost entirely obliterated in order to feed the ever-expanding mass of humanity. Most of that farmland, by the way, was once a magnificent expanse of prairie, an ocean of grassy biodiversity teeming with wild, evolving life that in our landscape amnesia, society has collectively forgotten. Unmitigated land-eating sprawl Look at Phoenix, for instance. Unmitigated land-eating sprawl. Strip malls, strip mines. Gigantic scale monocultures, massive areas of deforestation, livestock-induced desertification, plastic-clogged oceans and waterways, plugged up rivers and reservoirs, not to mention mind-boggling traffic jams, overcrowded national parks, wars over territory and resources, even genocides and more are all related to overpopulation. And then there is the climate crisis wild card. Human overpopulation is the fundamental driving force behind nearly all environmental and social ills, yet this travesty rarely punctures the public discourse. I would be absolutely shocked if more than 3% uh, of counterpunch readers have made it this far into this essay. In the U.S., our public lands are also under siege by various manifestations of overcrowding, including, including growing armies of destructive off-road vehicle recreationists. Plus, population growth encourages more resource extraction on our public lands, such as logging, mining, oil drilling, and livestock grading, grazing in order to feed, house, and transport the growing population. Even the race to build more wind and more solar projects <coughs> has environmental costs that are exacerbated by the growing mass of humanity and its needs. And studies also show that having fewer children is by far the most efficient way to reduce one's carbon footprint. Population growth and development on adjacent lands damage and isolate wilderness areas and national parks. As these nature reserves become more hemmed in by humanity's ever-expanding footprint, their ability to protect biodiversity, evolution, and natural processes diminishes. If nothing else, ecologists have taught us that species and populations tend towards extinction as habitats shrink and become increasingly isolated. That is due largely to inbreeding depression, genetic drift, and the vulnerability of small isolated populations to environmental cataclysms such as disease, wildfire, or volcanic eruptions. Isolated national parks and wilderness areas become 
winos, nature reserves, wino nature reserves, wild in name only. For example, studies have documented the copious loss of native species inside U.S. national parks due to varying degrees of isolation. Yellowstone is still one exception, still harboring at least small populations of all known native vertebrates, mainly due to its size and the large designated wilderness areas that buffer most of Yellowstone's boundaries. Okay, well guys, uh, this goes on and on uh, and on uh. anyway guys I'm gonna sit here and read this till the battery goes out because uh, I understand uh, I'm pretty much talking to myself uh, but I'm going to keep on talking if you want to sit here and listen I'm putting the link on here. You can read it yourself, but don't waste your time sending the link to anybody else. They don't care. Your friends do not care. Your normie friends don't care. They don't want to hear this, okay? Do not send this link out. Your mainstream uh, Little lefty environmentalists like the readers of Counterpunch, they don't care. Okay? They don't want to hear it. But for the two or three people who want to hear this, I'm going to keep going until the battery collapses on this camera. Keep going. I'm halfway through, guys. As mentioned earlier, the U.S. population has grown by about 20 million during the last decade. Most of that growth is due to immigration as the U.S. birth rate has dropped to near replacement levels. Yet many other countries are still experiencing rapid population growth. This is not anti-immigration. It is a simple fact. I am the grandson of Russian immigrants. One way or another, we are all descended from immigrants. Four demographic factors determine population trends. Births, deaths, immigration, and emigration. In order to stabilize and reduce the population of the U.S., we must limit either births or immigration or some combination of each or increase the death rate, which most would agree is the, the, uh, is not the best option. Make no mistake, Overpopulation is a global problem, and although some Western countries have low birth rates, rapid population growth elsewhere spills over like an overflowing water fountain. To stem this global problem, each nation needs to have policies in place to halt population growth. Stabilizing and reducing the Earth's population is every nation's responsibility. Recognizing that immigration is part of the demographic equation, equation simply acknowledges basic mathematics. Shut up! Now it's mine! Shut up! Jesus. Uh, certainly, recent immigrants are rare. Recent immigrants are rarely conspicuous consumers. Many of them immigrate, you know, like here to the U.S. or to Europe, to escape violence and political retribution in their home countries. We need to make room for political refugees. I'm on board with that. 
but we cannot simply continue to accommodate more immigrants without making fewer babies, which he calls carbon bombs. This is a touchy subject, I know, and there are no easy answers, but right now a comprehensive U.S. population policy is completely lacking. Here in the U.S., more people mean more sprawl. I should walk around this neighborhood. More sprawl, highways, parking lots, concrete, crowding, plowed farmlands, resource extractions, and yahoos tearing up public land on off-road vehicles. According to a study uh, by Numbers USA, in a recent 15-year period, we lost about 18,000 square miles of undeveloped lands to sprawl. That is about 11.5 million acres, or the equivalent of over five Yellowstone National Parks, and 67% of that acreage loss was due in entirely to population growth. It makes little difference to imperiled wildlife whether urban sprawl houses Central American immigrants or Utah Mormons. Utah, by the way, has our nation's highest birth rate. What a surprise. Many facets of habitat destruction are simply a function of numbers Look at India or New Jersey. Jam-packed with humanity, there simply is not much room for nature. Everyone needs housing, food, plus transportation and associated infrastructure, no matter how careful they are to consume less and recycle more. So yes, of course, overpopulation is global, and we in industrial nations need to consume less and become less wasteful. We need to abandon the use of fossil fuels soon. To halt population growth, good health care, and family planning, including access to birth control and abortion, must be available to all everywhere on the planet. Women must become empowered, a tough challenge in countries ruled by religious fundamentalists. Also, human males can impregnate females 365 days per year. Males must take more responsibility <coughs> for birth control. In addition, our government should implement foreign policies that minimize refugees. <coughs> Damn it! And tax systems should reward small families and penalize big families. Good luck with all of that! Moreover, economies that rely on perpetual growth are not sustainable. Economies in the industrialized world are already too big. Their national products too gross. So we need to retool economic systems so that they are not dependent upon perpetual growth. In college, I nearly flunked Economics 101, so I admit to having no idea how to remove growth dependency from global economic systems. But the survival of life as we know it on Earth depends upon doing exactly that. <clears throat> of course, a byproduct of declining population would be a welcomed halt to economic growth. Human nature is a tough nut to crack. I have yet to see evidence 
that we can get nearly 8 billion humans in sync with everything that needs to be done. Witness the failure of the Biden administration to get even its minimal baby steps toward climate action through Congress. Now a word about news media. It is complicated in this age of social media and its related deluge of misinformation, of misinformation, yet we wild preservatives, an abbeyism, could do a better job educating and cajoling news editors, TV and radio commentators, reporters, bloggers, and others with a forum. Think about it. How often do we see or hear a news report that discusses population growth in the context of environmental destruction? Rarely. On rare occasions, it is mentioned. It is usually in the context of problems such as traffic jams or human health issues. Typical news is entirely anthropocentric, yet as we quibble about the arrangement of the deck chairs, the Titanic continues full speed ahead, icebergs be damned. Carrying capacity, what this is all about, overshoot, carrying capacity is a fundamental ecological concept. Exceed your carrying capacity and your environment fails to provide life's necessities. Nature has evolved to keep species in dynamic balance with their habitats. Extirpate the wolves and the elk overpopulate. Too many elk gobble up the willows and aspen and therefore beaver disappear because aspen and willow are their primary food. So the biologically diverse wetlands that the beavers produce also disappear. Too many humans gobble up wild nature nearly everywhere on earth resulting in massive documented depletion of wild habitats and life. We humans live an illusion. We pretend that, that technological or behavioral fixes allows us to circumvent nature's laws, but they do not. The inevitable is here, has been for decades. Look around. Just don't look up. Look around. Less than 10% of the U.S. south of Alaska is still in a wild condition. We have already destroy, destroyed so much, yet we remain in denial, oblivious to the root cause of nature's demise. Overpopulation. When you get right down to it, more babies equals less nature, whether those babies are born in Utah or Colombia or Siberia. The more people, the more nature bites the dust in literally every country and habitat from the Arctic to the Amazon to the depleted depths of the oceans. We cannot recycle our way out of this mess, and buying an electric car will not counter the annual loss of millions of wild acres due to human expansionism. Scientists estimate that there are somewhere between 10 and 30 million species of multicelled organisms on Earth while just one species now dominates essentially every corner of the planet. That would be us. We are already severely overpopulated. The sixth extinction is proof 
so is a drive through Denver or most any other gigantic growing mass of overcrowded urban humanity. Although this is subjective, I suspect that the true, capari true carrying capacity for humans on Earth is closer to 2 or 3 billion people rather than today's 7.9 billion. So yes, be sure to recycle, buy an electric car, eat less meat, work to elect politicians who will promote wild wilderness and renewable green energy, install solar panels on your roof, but also limit reproduction and help to bring the population con conundrum into the public debate. Accept no excuses from governments, industrialists, news editors, religious fanatics, anthropocentric humanists, or anyone on either side of the political divide because ultimately even the Pope requires a habitable planet despite the widespread myopic illusion that growth has no limits. A philosophy that viewed rationally is absolutely, utterly, and patently insane. <laughs> Amen, Brother Howie Wolk. Uh, since I missed my Sunday doomsday sermon because I was in my gas-sucking truck spending $415 burning how many gallons of fossil fuels to get to the great state of Texas. Did not have my doomsday sermon, but thank you, Howie, for making up the slack and then some. But anyway, I have got to wrap this up because I think I just burned my chicken pie. Get out there and enjoy all the birds, chicken pies you can while you still can. Bye, guys.